Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel, Smithshake's Custom Baits, Rick Smithshake here. Um, today we're going to be tying our first jig on the channel. Um, the vise came in yesterday around 5.30 or 6 it got here. Uh, by the time I assembled it, which wasn't difficult, uh, I then familiarized myself with, with, with all the features of it. Um, tied a couple of jigs last night and uh, by that time it was too late to do a video. So, that's okay. We waited until today. And um, today we're going to tie our first jig. Okay. I'm going to tie it in a color pattern that I used to tie woolly buggers in. Right? A purple body with a chartreuse tail. Right? The purple chenille on the body, uh, chartreuse uh, marabou for the tail. And then of course we'll tie in the hackle too. Um, we'll, I'll show you the vise a little bit. Um, but first, before we do that, I'm going to move the camera over and I want to show you guys something. We had, I had a, I had a, had a, very fair question about one of my molds um, and the injection port. So let's go ahead and cover that real quick for Andy. Um, and uh, and then we'll get started on the jig, right? Okay. Uh, here we have an enforcer mold. And here's a Jacobs mold. Okay. Um, here is a injector. All right. Which you can see fits right here. Okay. This is this is a standard injection port. Every manufacturer except for this one uses this same standard injection port, okay? So, how do we, oh, this, Jacobs makes their, makes a, an injector that fits right in here, fits perfectly in here, okay? Um, but I didn't wanna buy an injector just for one mold, and, or even if I buy a couple more molds, I don't wanna buy a, a separate injector just for his molds, so, um, but but that's what I should do for safety reasons. That's probably exactly what I should do um, But I don't so um, If I need to I'll go stand in the corner and await my beating um, But uh, this is what I do. I just take my injector. I stand it up like this and I very carefully Push the plunger down, okay, and then I move it over to the next mold, right? It, it does work. It's not the safest way to do this obviously but it does work and you can do it without making a mess so andy i hope that answers your question about the injection port um if if you do have a safety concern then i highly recommend buying his injector as well he has a ton of nice molds so um if, you, if you're going to buy a bunch of his molds um then why not why not uh, uh why not get his injector because it would that would Honestly, that would be the safest, uh, the safest route to go. So, okay, so I'm all set up here. Um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, there's a little too much thread there, I think. All right, when, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start wrapping the thread. I'm gonna start up here with the head. I'm gonna wrap it all the way down, right to the bend of the hook. You know, on this, I'm gonna have to adjust the tension on this bobbin just a little bit more. Because right. I shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to roll the bobbin manually in order to release thread. Like, like this here. It's a little bit too, a little bit too snug still. But before it was so tight that I had to, I had difficulty even getting it to move at all. It was just, oops, almost. You don't want to, you don't ever want to, you want to try to avoid hitting the tip of the hook because it is so sharp. Okay. And I think that's right about where we want to stop. All right. So now we're going to tie in the tail. This, this stuff right here. I'm going to tear it off if possible. They don't always tear off. I've seen them. I've seen on YouTube videos where they tear the stuff off the stems. So, you know, there that there is a bunch that just came right off. Um, let's see here. How much is? You know, this is probably enough for the small hook. It's only a size one hook, and I want the tail just a slightly longer, slightly longer than from the bend of the hook, from the outside bend of the hook, to the where, where, where the where the ball of that head head of the jig starts. So, 
Now that's probably not a bad spot right there. So let's go ahead and tie this in. Oops, hold on. There we go. All right. A couple of kind of loose wraps first, like that. Okay. Now I'm going to, the next wrap, I'm not going to catch that hook, right? <laughs> I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter. Okay. This next wrap, I'm going to pull it just a little, I'm going to pull it, I'm going to snug that one up. Okay. And now I'm going to wrap all the way up to the collar in this case. I'm going to use this marabou to help build up this base a little bit here, okay? What I would normally do is if I was going to tie a fly like this, okay, snip that piece there off. Um, let me trim this up a little bit too while I'm at it. And like Adam, I could sit here, Adam over on SDG Custom Lurecraft, I could sit here and trim this stuff, trying to get it perfect. I could do that all day long. But we're going to try to avoid that. All right. <laughs> all right, let's... I'm going to come back again, see if I can't get more of that down into the thread, buried in the hook. All right, let's come back here. I'm going to snip that stuff, trim it. Trim. And this is the cool part about this vise. I can just rotate it like this and see exactly what's still left on the other side to, to, to trim up, okay? There's no guesswork. You don't have to get up and move, you physically move your body around so you can see the other side of the, of, the, of the lure, okay? Just like that, there we go. Okay, now, now I'm gonna go ahead and run the, wrap the thread, I'm gonna, Tighten this just a hair. That's my intention for how easily this rotates. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get this thread all the way up to the front. And now I'm going to take a piece of purple chenille. I've already snipped that off. Okay, see about that. That's about that long. Okay. We're, going to, we're going to tie it in up here at the front of the. I keep wanting to call it a fly, and I guess it kind of is. It's a woolly bugger pattern tied to a jig head. Now we're going to slowly wrap all the way to the front without catching any of this stuff, any of the marabou. Okay, we want the marabou to stay all on sound. Let's make sure we didn't catch any there. Okay, now it looks pretty good. Right. Give myself a little more, more thread there. Okay, there, there's that. Okay, now I'm gonna, I'm going to do another little trim job here to get rid of some of this stuff here so it doesn't show up when I wrap the chenille. Okay, now, now I have to run the thread back to the top, back to the front, all right, and then I'm going to go ahead I'm going to give this a couple more wraps because we're going to lose some as I rotate this. And that's okay. Let's get that down there like so. Wrapped in there nice and tight. And see that I can tell how I'm doing here, how, what it's looking like as I rotate this around. I can tell, do I need to back it up and rewrap part of it because it's just not looking quite right or something? Well, I can see that and, I, and take care of it if there's something, some issue. I just love this new vice. Maybe not love, you know, that may be too strong a word. Okay, and we actually, we actually pro probably didn't need to give the, the thread a few extra wraps up here at the front because as I'm turning this, and I have to remember that, as I'm turning this, Instead of doing like this here, wrapping like this, okay? I mean, you could still do that, but by turning it, I added a few extra wraps and ran out of thread. I read, you know, I mean, the bobbin was right next to the, to the lure. And see that? I don't have to do that anymore either. I can just, I can just rotate it. I 
instead of doing like that. I did that as a, as a, as an example of what you can do, what you, what you may or may not, uh, I don't really want to say that. You know, I'm just not going to say it. <laughs> okay. Let's go and turn this again. So we get the fly up, sitting up top like that. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and snip this end off. All right. Let's take a look. I have a little tiny piece of chartreuse marabou sticking out back here. Okay. There we go. You can still steal, still see it just a little tiny bit, but that's okay. Well, I uh. I started off wrapping, I uh, tying in the, the hackle up here in the front. But I didn't like how that was turning out, so I stopped the video, took the hackle out, and now I'm going to tie it in from the back. I did see a guy yesterday who tied it in from the front, but I don't really like how that, how that worked out. So I'm going to tie it in. Right back here. Let's get this guy. One thing that works great with hackle or with hackle, with marabou, to keep it out of the way, is to get it wet. Just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and tie this here in. A couple kind of loose wraps, not super tight. But as I get that second one, I pull it tight and then wrap it four or five times here, like so. And now I'm going to run the thread up to the front okay just like that and now we will wrap the well hold on a second let me clip this the tail end of that feather if i can get it out of there there we go um so we grab that and pull it Little end piece maybe we can pick it out there we go, there we go. And I didn't get it snipped. We will this time. Bye. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's go ahead and wrap the hackle. Now I want to get the hackle wrapped to the front. Um, then I'll just have, my thread will already be there and I'll just tie it off and we'll glue the head, we'll glue it. I'll, well, I'll glue it after I, uh, after I do a whip finish on the head. And I'm not as cool as Adam over there yet. I don't know how to do a, a whip finish without. Without using a tool to do it. See that webbing in the feather? Let's see if we can't break that up a little bit. I kind of like that in the in the woolly bugger when I tie these. I don't know if I would I don't know if I would use that on other flies though. If I was oops. Okay, you know, we gotta be careful when you're pulling these. When you rotate them, because because the feathers are pretty easy to to break if you couldn't if you couldn't tell. There we go. Okay, let's get this wrapped carefully this time. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and do this. Take that off. I already got it in there once. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Oh, I might have to. Uh... See, that's the... one thing about tying like this is you can generally fix your screw ups, like I just had. Let's give this another try. <laughs> okay, well that one came all the way undone. So we have to rewrap the entire thing here. Okay, so maybe, maybe I should put two wraps 
around that. And this fe feather was, was almost not quite long enough. Okay. Get that around there like so. Let's go and wrap it again. Okay. One more real tight one. There we go. Now I'll take this off. Let's go ahead and snip it. You know, it kind of shows that I haven't done this in 20 plus years. Just a little bit though, right? Okay, wrap some thread around that there. Make sure it's tied in nice. And now we'll grab our whip finisher. That's probably enough. Go down, bam, like this. Cut our thread. See our There we go. And now I'll glue the head. You gotta glue that thread up there in the head. And this glue jar, oh, there it goes. Keeps sticking. This is an old, old jar of glue. Okay. There we go. It's plenty of glue. And this guy is ready to go catch panfish or bass, whatever. Whatever decides to bite. Okay. Yeah. And it also helps to show it off too, with this rotation, this rotary feature. Okay. And there we have it. There's our first video. Oops, let's come down here. There's our first video. With a, with a with a jig tie, okay. I'll get and I and I'll get the hang of doing this one again, tying this pattern again. Um, it was just a matter of practice. I tied probably hundreds of these before. Now it was hundreds because I went through hundreds of hooks. Um, there you have it. All right. If you as always, if you liked what you saw today, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, I had a ton of fun making this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do nothing but get better at this. Uh, it would be the body would be would be a little more even if if the collar, if I didn't have a collar on the shank of the hook um, on this with this with this chick head. Um, but on the other hand, fish don't have straight bodies. Okay, so if this is gonna represent a a, 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 a small fish of some sort. Um, Maybe it doesn't need to have a straight body. Uh, so, uh, but still, I had a ton of fun making it. Uh, it's, I, I look forward to making even more stuff. Um, I got some, uh, some skirt materials in today. Uh, some, bla some, jig uh, some, jig some blades for bladed jigs. There, I see, I can say it. <laughs> um, and so that we have that to look forward to in the future. Uh, next week's video, hopefully it will be next week's video, but that, it kind of depends on a couple factors. Um, it might be two weeks. Next, if not next week, then the week after that for sure. Um, it'll be kind of a special video. Yeah, it's uh, uh, be making kind of a special lure for for, for someone. Um, it was a request. Um, so hopefully we get to see that next week. Uh, I'm going to start. I'm going to make the lure tomorrow and video it. And then there's some other stuff that has to happen before I can finish the, finish the video put the finishing touches on it, and then upload it. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, until next time, everyone, tight lines, calm waters, and God bless.